Y'all want to hear some more of that? You can't. Welcome, welcome to the Longview Heights Seven Day Adventist Church. All right, we're going to ask you like we always do. We're going to ask you to stand for our congregational hymn this morning. The hymn this morning is Redeemed. We're going to go to 337 or 338. Which one y'all want? Let's do 37. I feel like 337 is the redeemed we are today. Maybe next week we'll do 338. Amen. Let's begin right here. Redeem. Redeem how I love to proclaim it. Redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem through His infinite mercy. His shouting forever I am. Redeem. Redeem. Redeem by the song praise team, is, praise team is going to sing for you this morning is a familiar song. The song asks, what did you come to this service for? <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to give some suggestions of why some people might have came, and then we're going to let you know, hopefully, why all of us came to this service this morning. you 
How many of y'all came to praise him? Amen, amen. Well, as we continue in this service, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for protecting us throughout this week. Lord, thank you for being our alarm clocks throughout this week and waking us up every day. Lord, thank you for all of your blessings that you bestowed upon us, all the protections that you provided, seen and unseen. Lord, there's so many people that's going through sicknesses, depressions. Lord, they need your strength. They need to know that you have not forgot about them this morning. Lord, so I'm asking special blessings, special prayer for everybody in the room, everybody watching online, whether they're watching it right now, or they're going to watch it later today, or they're going to watch it later in the week. Lord, still bless them. Still show up in their lives so that they know you are real. Sometimes we're sitting around and we we give more truth and reality to test results. We give more reality to what the people around us are talking about. We give more reality to likes on social media. Help us to realize immediately in our lives that the realest thing that we know is you. The things that we should be holding on to are the promises that you've given us. Lord, somebody really needs you because somebody is sitting in doubt, in disbelief, in disarray. And they need to hear from you today, Lord. So I'm just asking that you be with us in this house, Lord. Help us to leave here knowing that we heard a word from you. Bless your manservant today that the word that he gives comes straight from you and it's exactly what somebody in this room needs. Somebody online needs to hear it. Lord, and make sure that person that needs to hear it, make sure that they get it, whether we have to send it to them or whether something just tells them, the Holy Spirit just tells them, tune in right now to this service or turn your car around and walk into this building, Lord, because somebody needs to hear this word from you. Lord, this is my prayer this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. So we are here on the third Sabbath of the month. And by now, you should know third Sabbath is... Yeah, people online, they did say you Sabbath. I don't know if you heard it, but they knew it. They knew what it was. This is our you Sabbath. And I guess one way you should know it is because that's usually when I'm up here doing something, but eventually, eventually, you're going to have some people up here. Well, you'll have somebody up here, not me, with no gray in their hair. Can y'all see that online? Can y'all see that in the audience? It is a little gray. It's a little gray, but I'm not, I'm not scared of it, though. I, I did. At one point, I was. All right, so this is our youth Sabbath, and so today we do have a couple activities planned for our youth our normal Sabbath school service is still going to go on as normal, but we also have an AY program that's going to follow Sabbath school today that's designed especially for our young people. And it's going to be led by one of the youngest members of the youth department, Elder Cowan. Y'all don't know that online. The, the people here, they know who I'm talking about. Y'all might know who I'm talking about, but it's, she's one of the youngest in our youth department. Because you got to be young inside. I'm not talking about your age. I'm talking about how you feel. And if you see Sister Cowan running around this church, you'll know that she is young on the inside. All right? So she's going to be doing the AY program for us today. So we invite everybody to stay, not only the youth, but the young at heart. It's going to be a blessing, I believe. I believe. All right. Amen. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercies, they endure how long? How long do they endure? They endure forever. Good morning, everybody. 
It's good to see you. Would you just look at somebody and say, I feel good today. I feel good today. It's so good to know that the Lord is leading in our lives. I enjoy our praise team singing those songs of praise. Thank you for our musicians for lifting our, 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 our hearts closer to God. It's something about praising God that just makes you feel better. And I'm glad that you're here. Whether you're online or watching us uh, on one of our platforms, we want to welcome you to the wonderful, friendly church, the Longview Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Memphis, Tennessee. Amen. If you get a chance, we'd love for you to come by. If you can, why don't you call somebody up on your phone or text them and let them know that this is a place where they can hear the word of God this morning. We start out kind of early in the morning. I believe it's important to serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with thanksgiving. And let's do it early. The early I start, the better I feel. So I'm glad that you're here with us today. I have just a few of announcements before I go into our message this morning. First of all, I want to tell you about prayer meeting. I believe prayer meeting is the lifeblood of the church. And so at prayer meeting, we start at 630. We spend time in prayer for 30 minutes. I'm doing a series on spiritual gifts. And on this Wednesday night, I'm going to talk about the gift of tongues and the gift of prophecy. The gift of tongues and the gift of prophecy. These are some power gifts that we see enacted in our world today. And we're going to bring from the Word of God, what these gifts means and how we can identify them. So that's this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, 6.30 we start for our prayer meeting. Also, for our two schools that are joining together, our, which is something really exciting, the GMAA and MJA school joining together, we're having a constituency meeting on the 25th of this month. That's next Thursday. We will give you the link. It will be on Zoom. It will be on Zoom. We will give you the link as soon as I get it. And we will uh, invite all the different members of our churches to be a part of this meeting because we want to talk about the Constitution, how we're going to join together. It's almost like a premarital class. Is, is anybody, have anybody got married lately? Y'all haven't got married lately? Y'all been married for a while? Okay, so pre-marriage is when, before you get married, you get some counseling. Some of you young people might, might, might need that. Help me, Holy Ghost. Some people need counseling after they get married. Yeah. Am I right about it? But this is a premarital class. It's sort of saying, how are we going to work together? What are the ground rules? What is the Constitution? What is about uh, the, the bylaws? How are we going to work as a team? You want to be there for that. That's on Thursday, the 25th at 6.30 on, our, on, a, on a Zoom uh, link. I'm going to give you the Zoom link. I don't have it just right now. Our own school is having a constituency meeting uh, on the 28th. That's a Sunday. Uh, I believe it's at 10 o'clock. Is it 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock. We'll have that on our Zoom as well. We'll give you some more information on that but that will be our own constituency meeting. The thing that I'm most excited about is our summer camp this year. Our summer camp is going to start on the 5th of June, and we're going to go all the way to August, every day except Saturday and Sunday. We want to give some young people an opportunity to learn about the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? We want to give them a meal. We, we don't want to just talk about just talk about how the terrible things are going on in Memphis, but what can we do to help? All right, well, maybe you work every day of the week, but maybe you have some time off. We would love for you to share with us and come by and just see some of these young people and encourage them. They're the young people in our community. And if we can do anything for the, our community, we should do more than just open up on Saturdays and come in and have church. Is anybody listening to me today? In fact, if that's the only thing that we do, we really don't have a reason to exist. Our real reason to exist is to help people in the community. So I would love to have volunteers to come talk to Elder Cowan, to myself, and let's see how we can minister to the young people 
in this community and have an effect upon their lives. Not only their lives, but if we have the right effect, they will take these Bible stories that we teach them, these songs that we teach them, to their homes. Amen? And their parents. You know, it's not enough. You know, if we have a parenting class, only a few people will come. All right? Because parents don't have time to come to a parenting class. But if we will help put, instill, and infuse, and pour into children the truth of God, they will just naturally be the evangelists. Help me, Holy Ghost. And they'll take it to their parents and share the word. You know the Bible says, my word will not return void. Do you believe that? But we've got to give it to them in a loving way. We can't just say, you can't do this, you can't do that. We've got to show love. Am I right about it? And when we do that, it will make a difference. So I'm encouraging you to take a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. We're going to start at 9 o'clock and go all the way to 4. If you can, come and visit us. If you can't come, at least pray for us. Is that fair enough? At least pray for us. May God bless you today as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Next song, Praise Team is going to sing. Uh, it's also one that y'all have heard us do before. But um, but uh, <laughs> I kind of want to lead into it with something. Um, I don't know if she knows it, but um, there was a church member who I heard about her testimony. And from the moment I heard it, I couldn't forget it. And it actually was a a blessing to me. And I never got the chance to tell her that her testimony was a blessing, but I'm going to use this opportunity to let her know. Um, Sister Hill, she's the niece of one of our choir members, David Wooten, and we were in choir rehearsal, and David Wooten and I, we always talk, he always tell me what's going on, and he was telling me about his niece, and I hope you don't mind, I'm going to share it. She was... Um, having some complications and they had to call the ambulance to pick her up and they put her in the ambulance and they were taking her and they, you know, were working on her and the paramedic said, um, we're going to have to stop your heart and then we'll, we'll start it back. And he looked at it and he said, um, you don't look scared. And she said, um, it's because I'm not worried. Because I know God. I know God's got me. And I was like, that, that's some faith right there. And I was sitting and I said, it's so easy to talk it. But you got people who standing on it. And that blessed me. And I was like, I want that when I'm faced with those challenges and those trials to say, I know God's got me, but if not, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. And this next song says, faithful is our God. Yeah. 
speak on the subject, the valley of blessings. The valley of blessings. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, which art in heaven, speak through your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please turn in your Bibles to the book of Second Chronicles. 
there's Kings, and then there's Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Chronicles is more like a news report or a documentary of what happened in the time of the Old Testament, probably written by Ezra, one of the prophets of old, after they came from um, cap captivity in Babylon and actually meet a Persian. And he gives a, a, a account of the different things that happened in that time in the book of Chronicles. Our chapter is Chronicles chapter 20, verse 26. Do you have it? If you have it, say amen. Okay. And on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Barak. For there, they had, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name the place was called, for the name of that place was called the Valley of Barak until this day. Will you repeat after me? Your most significant blessing will happen in a valley. Let me say that again. Your most significant blessing will happen in a valley. Um, has anybody been to the Grand Canyon? Been to the Grand Canyon? Grand Canyon is awesome. It is a huge... It's really windy up here. Yeah, the Grand Canyon. You can kind of hear it. It's an awesome night. Get on vacation. We love to go to crazy places that have a lot of natural scenery. So, so when we were there, it was really windy. It was in the month of October, no, November, and it was kind of cold. And the Grand Canyon is nothing but a large valley. It is huge. It covers four states. Arizona, it touches these states, I should say, Colorado, Utah, and Nevada. And, and when you look at this massive land, you realize how small you really are. If you ever get a chance, go to the Grand Canyon. Spend some time there, and you can get to see how great God is. He's bigger than anything else we can imagine. But I want you to understand that the Grand Canyon is nothing but a gorge. It is nothing but a basin. It is nothing but a valley. It is a depression between two high plateaus. And valleys are always lower than the regular land. In our scripture text today, we find in... Second Chronicles chapter 20, we find Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat. He was the king of Judah. Being the king of Judah, he was in charge. Jehoshaphat was a good king. He did what was right in front of the Lord. But Jehoshaphat, although he was a good king, he had problems. The Bible says in, Gen in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the first part, that, that the Amorites and the Moabites and the children of Seir came up to fight against him. The Moabites and the Amorites, they were distant relatives of the Israelites because Lot's two sons were Moab and Amorite. Uh, that's where they came from. But after a while, they begin to fight. You know how family can fight sometimes. Amen? Well, they had gotten larger, and, and they wanted property, and they wanted land. And just like today in Palestine, you will see the Israelites fighting against the different people that are in that land. And the reason why they're fighting is because everybody says, this land belongs to me. So I don't like here in America how we think this is our land. We spend more resources 
in countries and send them monies in Ukraine than we spend on the southern border. Oh, y'all not listening to me today. Uh, we, we, we spend more resources in sending monies to other different countries, and, and we're more concerned about that than helping people um, that have financial issues, are, are issues to try to make ends meet, and we don't, we don't really care even if the debt ceiling does not get raised as long as we can get what we want to get. And it's because we think this land is our land. I think they ought to visit the Grand Canyon. Um, the, the Bible lets us know that Jehoshaphat, he, he realized that he could not fight this enemy on his own. The Moabs, the Moabites, and the Amorites, they were too big for him to fight. And so he did the best thing you can do when you get to ready to have a fight. Spend time in prayer. Are you listening to me today? If you want to fight your wife, instead of fighting your wife, get down on your knees and say, honey, let's pray. Oh, it might make a difference. I don't know. I don't know what the issue might be. But it might help out a lot. If you get, just before you get ready to beat your child, just spend down, get on your knees and pray. Uh, is anybody listening to me today? Uh, he, he began to pray and he called a fast. And everybody in the country came together and they began to pray and to seek the Lord. The Lord sent a prophet. Do you know God? will send prophets. He'll give you a message so that you know exactly what to do. And we have to listen to the prophet. The Bible says in this same chapter, uh, 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 Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20, the Bible says these words. So early in the morning, so they rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O, is, o Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be what? Established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall what? There is a gift that God has given us called the gift of prophecy. And we need to understand how to use that gift. We need to know that the word of God is more important than anything else. But every now and then, God will send a prophetic word. He may use somebody that you don't even know. Am I right about it? And, and Jehoshaphat said, because Jehazel had already given them, he was a prophet, he gave them information. He said, believe in his prophets, so shall ye prosper. God wants to give each one of us spiritual gifts, but we don't all have the same gifts. One of the gifts is prophecy. Notice what the Bible says over in the book of Ephesians. What book did I say, everybody? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8. The Bible says, Therefore he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. God, when he left this earth, he, captive, he, captive, he, he, he captured death. He led it in his train. He, he said, death is in my control, and I'm going to give gifts to people. He led captive. Do you all see that? God has some spiritual gifts that he wants to give you. What are some of these spiritual gifts? I want you to turn in your book, in your Bibles, to the book of Joel. What book did I say, everybody? I know it's going to be hard to find Joel. Daniel, Hosea, Joel, all right? One of those minor prophets with a major message. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. Joel chapter 2, starting with verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on what? All flesh. And your sons and your what? Would you say that one more time? And your sons, do you know God is no respecter of person? God looks at gender, he looks at male and female, and he says they are the same. Both the man, the boy, and the girl can prophesy. Isn't that, is that what it says? Sons and your daughters shall prophesy. But then he says, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also on my manservants and on my maidservants, I will pour out my spirit 
in those days. God says, I am pouring out my spirit on people regardless of the way they are, how old they are, how young they are, if they're male or female. I'll pour out my spirit on everybody. You can't say only men have it. Amen? You can't say, oh, oh, well, only the men can have the Holy Ghost. No! The Holy Ghost goes to everybody. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to be thankful for that. Uh, can I give you another text uh, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses? Next to, next to, next to Joel is the book of Amos. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. The Bible says in Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets to his servants, the prophets. God has some secrets, and every now and then he'll have a prophet or a prophetess, and he'll reveal to them some information. Isn't that good news? He gave, he gave he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. And when we believe his prophets, then great things happen. Well, Jezeel, he was one of the prophets during Jehoshaphat's day. And, and he wanted Israel to know that God was going to keep them. He gave them special, secret information that was able to get them through this time of emergency. Every now and then in your life, you're going to need special help. Amen? And, and this is what happened in, 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 in Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, they were going through a difficult time. Moab and Ammon were there. They were trying to defeat the children of Israel. They were wanting to wipe them off the mat. They wanted to destroy them. And instead of them just giving up, they begin to pray. And when you pray, God sends an answer. Amen? God sent an answer. And, and the answer was, was right there. Because God has blessings. You know, God's blessings are ubiquitous. They, I like that word. I just like to use it. I don't, I look to, yeah. they, 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 that, that means that they go everywhere. They're, God's blessings are, they, not, they're virtual. Does anybody stand in need of a blessing today? Can anybody use one or two of them? The blessings go everywhere. They don't only go to your, your church, but they go to everybody in your family. Isn't that awesome? When you get home today, why don't you pray that God will bless every, every nephew and every cousin them and every niece and every uncle. and God, he's a blessing God. His blessings are ubiquitous. They cover every, and not only that, God will bless the good people and the bad people. Am I right about it? There are some people that don't serve God and he still blesses them. Isn't that good news? There are some people that don't come to church and he's still blessing. Don't you complain because God's blessings are ubiquitous. God, that's, that's the word you can use. God, God, God wants to bless you and he'll bless you over and over and over again. Somebody says he keeps blessing me. <laughs> he just keeps on blessing. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but God wants to bless everybody. In fact, if you are alive today, it is because you are blessed by God. Am I right about it? If you are alive, some people are alive, but maybe they're not in their right mind. But they're still blessed by God. Turn to somebody and say, are you okay? We, we have a lot of mental health problems in the world. <laughs> mental health problems in the church today. And even though you got mental health problems, God is still blessing you. Amen. They're ubiquitous blessings. Well, then God's blessings happen in strange places. I would normally think that God's blessings would be on the mountain where everything is great. I would normally think that God's blessing will lift you up where you belong, on eagle's wings. But what God's blessings do his most significant blessings are actually in the valley. God puts his blessings in a depressed place. 
Notice what happens in our story today. They were, they were, they were, they were being taunted and, and attacked by Moab and Ammon. And then the Bible lets us know that God gave them a word through a prophet. Listen to what the prophet said. It's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. And he said, Listen, all you Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not what? Do not be afraid, nor dismay. Why? Because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours. It's God's. Ain't that a word? And ain't, that, ain't that a word? The battle is not yours. He said, look, look, don't be afraid because of Moab. Because of Ammon. We got a lot of Moabs and Ammon. Some, some, some people got Moab and Ammon sitting right next to them. Some people got Moab and Ammon in their, in their downline. Uh, some people got on their Facebook Moab and Ammon, and, and they're, they're ready to get you. Sometimes Moab sends you a letter and says, we're going to repossess your house. Sometimes they come take your car. Sometimes they give you bad news. But he says, don't be afraid and be dismayed because of Moab and Ammon. Because this battle is not yours, it's God's battle. Hallelujah. I'm going to say hallelujah myself. You don't have to get excited. I'll get excited all by myself. Hallelujah. People in church miss their shouting points. That was one right there. You all just passed by you. Uh, the battle is God's battle. Come on and say yeah. It's God's battle. It's not your battle. And you said, don't be dismayed. Don't be afraid because of all the people that are against you because the battle is not your. Even if it seems like you're defeated, the battle is not your battle. It's God's battle. Sometimes we'll get depressed and we'll get discouraged, even as Christians. Sometimes we just have a bad day. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes we just have a bad day. We pray and we try to praise God and, and it just seems like it's just not going right. And so God has a sin of prophet. <laughs> Would you look in the text with me? Look, let's, 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 let's look at another verse. And in and, and 2 Chronicles, chapter, chapter 20, verse 17 and 18, you will not need to fight in this battle. Did you, did you see it? You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you? O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Hallelujah! <laughs> He said, he said, look, look, you don't have to fight, but you got to show up. Put some boxing gloves. You won't need your boxing gloves, but put some on anyway. You won't need to have your fighting clothes, to fight, but put fighting clothes. Sometimes you got to go up against the enemy and say, look, I can't beat you, but I'm here anyhow because I'm not fighting this battle. I'm just here. I'm a bench warmer. And you know what? When the stars on the team, when they win, and the team, that, that the people that are on the bench, they didn't even play, but they get a ring as well. Am I right about it? They didn't get any play time, but they were able to cheer on. And sometimes God will have you on the bench, but you just can't not show up. You can't, you may be on the, the, the IR list, the injured reserve, and God says, I know you're not hurting. I mean, I know you're hurting. I, I know you're, you're depressed. I know you got mental uh, problems, but, but I want you to show up. Too often in the church of God, we'll say, I'm not coming, I'm not coming to church. I'm not, I'm so messed up. I'm just going to stay here. So often when, when things are going wrong, we, we'll, we'll say, well, 
I just can't do it today. And God says, look, I'm not going to fight without you. I'm going to fight for you. Oh, y'all didn't listen to me today. I'm not going to fight without you. God doesn't fight by remote control. You got to be there. You got to get there. You got to face the Moabites. You got to look them eyeball to eyeball. You got to look at the Amorites and the children of Seir. They got, you know why? Because God wants to get a testimony out of you. And when you stand up in front of them, the devil says, wait a minute. Aren't they scared? Why are they standing? You're not standing because you're going to fight. This fight belongs to God. But you got to get there. You got to get on the battlefield. I don't care how depressed you are, get on the battlefield. Turn to somebody and say, get back on the battlefield. Get back on the battlefield. I know you got off for a while. I know you said, I'm kind of old. I, I, I'm tired. I, 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 people said some mean things to me. Uh, people don't talk to me in church anymore. People don't do. Uh, uh, I, I fell. I fall all the time. And, and I don't deserve to be on the battlefield. God does not require you to be perfect to fight. Because he's not interested in your fight anyhow. Amen. You try to wait to get all your sins together, you will never get on the battlefield. Come on the battlefield dirty. <laughs> Come on the battlefield stained. Come on the battlefield broken. Just get on the battlefield because the battle is not yours. In fact, the Bible says, the Bible says in this passage, when you get on the battlefield, don't try to fight. Don't be using your karate. Don't use your Smith & Wesson. Don't use your AR-15 or whatever that thing is. When you get on the battle, just position yourself. <laughs> Stick your chest out. Stand still. Watch God do it. Stand still. Watch God work it out. Stand still. And watch God do it because the battle is not your battle. Will you turn to somebody and say, it's not my battle. I don't have to get mad at you because it's not my battle. I don't have to curse you out because it's not my battle. I don't have to get mad at you because it's not my battle. I don't have to talk about your mama because it's not my battle. Oh, yeah, you can do all the things you want to me, but it's not my battle. The battle is the Lord's. Oh, I, I got to let it go. I, it, it's kind of exciting to me when I think about how you can be depressed and still stand still. Don't be running around here trying to get a loan from this bank and a loan from that savings alone. Stand still. Turn to somebody and say, stand still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? See the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes when you get so deep in the battle, it seems like you will get killed. See, a valley is normally a place where they put dead bodies. In fact, one, one prophet said he was in a valley of dry bones. Sometimes I feel like I'm that way sometimes in church. Uh, a valley is a place where dead people go. But even if you're dead, God has a word for you. Hallelujah. Even if rigor mortis have set in, even if you have atrophied, even if no more breath is in your body, even if your heart stops beating, even if your brain waves don't work anymore, my God has a message for you today. Verse 22. Verse 22. I'm just, I'm just reading the word today. Now when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes against Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were, what everybody? Defeated. Verse 23. 
And the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end to the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. And when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, that, that's looking down in the valley, they looked toward the multitude. And there was indeed dead bodies fallen on the earth. And no one escaped. You know what God will do? He will kill your enemies in the valley. In fact, he won't even let you kill them. He'll kill them himself. In fact, he'll let them kill themselves. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? God will say, the children of Moab, kill the children of Seir. And as you kill all them, Ammon, kill the children of Moab. And they were all killing each other until they got to the last two people and they both stabbed each other at the same time. <laughs> they, they didn't fight. They just stood back and God did everything else. Maybe you got some Moabs and some Syrians and, and some all sorts of big Negroes in your life. <laughs> but God, he's able to let them kill themselves. Yes, he will. You don't have to kill him. Maybe you think you're dead. He'll kill those people that think that they're killing you. And the Bible says not one of them escaped. Hallelujah. I kind of get excited about that. The Bible lets us know that if we just stand still, see the salvation of the Lord, even in a valley, God, he's so God that he'll kill your enemies in the valley. Blessings in the valley. Hallelujah. Can I get to my last point? I think that was just, that was enough, but I, I, I just need another praise point for myself. I don't know about you, but every now and then I need a bonus praise. <laughs> that was good, but I got a bonus praise for you. It's found in verse 26. The Bible says, verse 26, same chapter. So, and on the fourth day, let me explain. For three days, they were gathering all the jewelry, all the money, all the riches of the people that kill themselves. See, when you're dead, you can't use a Rolex. Am I right about it? When you're dead, you can't use a Louis Vuitton. What's that kind of purse y'all like to have? When you're dead, you can't use that purse anymore. So God's people <laughs> can come up and pick up your purse because you're dead. <laughs> God's people can pick up your 401k because you're dead. Uh, God's people uh, can come and get all the food that you got in your house uh, because you can't eat it no more because you're dead. And for three days, the Bible said they picked up all the loot. Uh, they picked up everything. And they could, it was so much, the Bible said, they couldn't carry it all. And they got tired on the fourth day. Uh, they worked so hard. They said, we got so many blessings. In the valley, we can't carry no more blessings. Uh, the blessings are too heavy for us to carry. Verse, verse, verse 26. And on the fourth day, they tired now. They carried all these blessings. They tired. The Bible says then on the fourth day, they, they, they assembled in the valley of Barak. Barak means blessings. That's what it means. It means blessings. They, they got into a point where they just said, man, this is so, you know what? We're in a valley, but we're, we're in a valley of blessings. <laughs> we're in a valley of blessings. And, and, and they said, and on the four, fourth day, they came back and the Bible says, verse 26, therefore they named the place, they named, the name of the place was called 
the valley of Barak until this day. Let me tell you something. When Moab and the Amorites and the children of Seir, when they pin you down, when you have some people that try to hurt you, when you have some people that try to mess you up, and they may do a pretty good job. Maybe they messed you up a long time ago when you were a little kid. Maybe they abused your childhood. Maybe they hurt you and told you you were not going to amount to anything. Maybe they gave you a hard time in school and said you will never make it any kind of way. You will always be a failure. Maybe they hurt you and they raped you or they killed you or they did something mean to you or they stole your money or they shot you. And what God is saying to you, that you are in a valley of blessings. But what you have to do is call the valley by name. See what the text says? They named the valley Barak. Whatever you're going through, name your valley. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a difficult thing that you're going through, but call it, it's a valley, but it's a valley of blessings. <laughs> I got some scars, but it's a valley of blessings. I got some, I got cancers in my body, but it's a valley of, a valley of blessings. <laughs> High blood pressure is controlling my life and diabetes is messing with me, but it's a valley, but it's a valley of blessings. My marriage is on the rocks, uh, but it's a valley, a valley of blessings. Uh, my children are acting as stupid as I am, but it's a valley of blessings. Uh, everything's going hell in my life, but it's a valley of blessings. Name your valley. It's a valley of blessings. I got some sins that I can't control. I got some addictions that seem like they take control of my life. I try to stop and before I know it, I'm doing it again. And I get all discouraged, Elder Brown, and I feel like nothing's going to ever come of it. But it's a valley of blessings. <laughs> I can name my valley. And when they name the valley, the Bible says it's called the Valley of Blessings to this day. <laughs> Every now and then, Church of God, call out your valley. Say, I'm in the valley, but I'm the Valley of Blessings. Hallelujah. Oh, I got to end this sermon. Well, what, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say today is you got to trust God in the valley. Your most significant blessings will happen in a valley. Not on a mountain. Not when everything is going great. When everything is going bad. When you don't have any food to eat. Or the foods you have, you don't like it. Uh, your most significant blessings may happen in a hospital bed. Your most significant blessings when you'll stand beside that loved one that's breathing their last breath and you'll see tears so sweet to trust in Jesus. Your most significant blessings will happen when you don't have any way out and your life is just messed up and you're ready to give up. Claim and name your valley. It's a valley, a valley of blessings. It's a valley of blessings. Valley of blessings. Hallelujah. Soon as I stop worrying Worrying how the story ends. I let go and I let God let God have his way. That's when things start happening. I stop looking at back then. I let go 
and I let God let God have his way couldn't seem to fall asleep there was so much on my mind searching for that peace the peace I could not find so then I went down to pray praying help me please then he said you don't have to cry Cause I have all that you need Soon as I stop worrying <laughs> Worrying how the story ends Oh, I let go And I let God Let God have his way That's when things start happening I stopped looking at back then. I let go and I let God. Let God have his way. Let go. Let God. Let go. And let God. Let go. And let God, oh, let go, and let God, oh, let go, and let God, just let go, and let God, my brother, you can't fix it, just let God, my sister, you can't handle it, just let God, hey, let go. God, just let go and let God. He can solve your issues. He can fix your problems. Just let go and let God. Hey, let go and let God. Just let go and let God. Oh, let go. Let God just let go and let God soon as soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story is. I let go and I let God let God have his way. That's when things start happening. I stopped looking at back then. I let go and I let God. Let God have his way. I let go. I let go. I let go, I just let go, just stand still, see the salvation of the Lord, I let go, cause it's not my battle anyway, I just let go, does anybody want to let go, anybody want to let go, anybody want to stand with me and say I'm letting go, I'm going to let God, I'm going to let God, let him have his way Oh, soon as Soon as I stop Worrying Worrying How the story is I let go And I let God Let God have His way That's when things start Happening, yeah I stopped looking at back then. 
I let go and I let God let God have his way. Somebody today want to give their lives completely to the Lord and be a baptized member of this church. Whoever you are right now is the time for you to come forward and say, Lord, I'm going to let go. Yeah, I know I got issues. I got a job. I got a problem. I got situations in my life, but I'm going to let go. Maybe you're watching us. And today, you need to let go. Maybe you've been struggling the whole year after year and trying to fix this issue. You haven't gotten any farther than when you first started. You've been promising God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do better. But the problem is that you're saying, I'm going to do better. We have to understand that you can't do it by yourself. You can't fix it on your own. But today, you want to say, Pastor, by the grace of God, I'm going to let go. I'm going to let God have his way in my life. I want to be a baptized. I don't know how he's going to fix it. I don't know how he's going to straighten it out. But he's God of all the earth. It's not my fight anyway. I'm going to let God have it. And I'm going to live in the valley of blessings. That's what you want to do today. We invite you to come forward and say yes. I'm going to let God have his way. Whoever you are, may God have his way. Soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, I let go and I let God, let God have his way. That's when things start happening. I stop looking at back then I let go and I let God let God have his way Father which are in heaven we're thankful that you're willing to fight for us we claim this valley that we're in it's a valley of blessings Barak is a valley of blessings. Help us to be faithful to you. But even when we fall, help us to know we're still in the valley of blessings. Somebody today, their heart is being torn. They, they're struggling. They, they know you want them to let go, but they're holding on to stuff. Maybe they're watching us, or maybe they're in this room. Let them know it, it just won't work out right until they let go. It's always going to be messed up until they let go. It's always going to be problematic until they let go. But when they release everything to Jesus, you will fight for them. Moab and Ammonites don't have a chance against the God we serve. Keep us by your grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.